Hi everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're going to go over repairing touchscreens, more specifically repairing resistive touchscreens. Most medical equipment has resistive touchscreens. You can tell because they got this soft plasticky layer on the outside. It makes them subject to ding damage and impact damage, but it makes them also able to be cleaned easily and you can touch them with any object to activate the touch. It doesn't require a capacitive finger. What happens when you boot up a device is it goes through and it actually checks the touch screen to make sure that there's no activation. And with a resistive touch screen, there's a gap, an air gap between the layers normally. And when you press in, you are activating a point between those two layers. And with an impact damage, there's a permanent contact point between the laminations. So what happens when you boot it up, often they'll go into an either an error because it knows that there's a problem or it will go into a touch calibration screen or it will um, just throw your touch screen off. You'll touch in one corner and your arrow will be down here in the corner. Or you'll touch over here and your arrow will be down here. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to repair these using a heat gun. And what it'll do is it'll take those laminations and you will heat it up on the outside which will cause it to bubble out while it's warm and it will separate the laminations and then as it cools down they will be planar again if that makes any sense. So here we go I'm going to show you some damages on some screens and I'm going to go ahead and use a heat gun at 200 degrees. We're trying not to get it so hot that it actually damages that soft plastic outer layer. We just want it to heat it up which causes it to expand and as it expands it's, it pulls those laminations apart. It's almost like taking a couple sheets of paper and, you, and the outer layer you squish towards the middle which will cause it to bubble up. And then as it cools down they'll become planar again and then you can boot up the device and it will act like normal. Now there might be some visual impairment at the site of the damage and that's completely subject to the device but often it will save you a very expensive repair bill because usually when a touch screen is damaged the company likes to charge you a flat rate repair and it's going to be, obs it's going to be an obscene amount of money. I think on one device my touchscreen repair was $8,000 flat rate repair and that makes no sense. This is going to help you stave off some of those excessive costs and uh, decrease your downtime considerably. So pay attention and I uh, hope you learned something. On this screen right here you can probably barely see it but there's a crease right there and if I get it in the correct lighting you can see it really well. And it's created a, a gouge. Oh, there you can see it. And with that gouge, it sees it as a as a contact point, like you're touching the screen. There's also a gash right here, and that gash is also probably going to be seen as a contact point. What we are going to do is we're going to heat this guy up and we're going to bubble that guy back out so that it's no longer a crease it's going to be a flat lamination and then this device will be able to boot up you can see I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to very quickly very lightly go over the area I don't know if you can see this too well you can maybe see it bubbling out a little bit there And then up here at this impact point, bubbles out just about a half a millimeter. You want to keep moving the heat around. Don't keep it on one spot because you don't want it to permanently deform that screen. Now I'm just going to straighten out a couple of these other areas where I can see previous impact damages. And then... Even though there is still a mark there, it's no longer a crease. 
You can see that it's flattened out. And that impact point there is no longer a divot. It's flattened out as well. So now I'm going to put it on the tower, boot it up, and make sure that there's no error codes. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something and I hope you guys save money on some of these repairs. Thanks.